for more on next year's World Cup, let's bring in Mike Bacco. He's the sports editor at DailyNational.com. Mike, thanks again for joining us as always. Uh, I, I want to ask you, where does Qatar's preparation currently stand? Do, do you think all of these stadiums are going to be prepared? Uh, do you think all of the infrastructure will be in place a year from now? It certainly seems that way. Uh, honestly, from our, what our reporting is telling us and what we're seeing on the ground is that it's really more about the infrastructure than the stadiums. I don't think that they could host the games right now. There's some things that still need to be ironed out. But in terms of the construction of the stadiums, keep in mind, seven of the eight stadiums are completely new construction stadiums. You have to think about the infrastructure of uh, these massive air conditioning units to, to keep everyone cool. The game's taking place in November instead of traditionally over the summertime. So there are still a lot of things to keep in mind that are going to make these, this World Cup different than all the others. But in terms of the stadiums being close, yes, they're about 90% done and ready. It's all the other infrastructure, everything from building roads and rails to something as simple as, as having a uh, light post put up on streets because there are going to be so many people flooding out from these stadiums in such a confined space over such a short period of time. Do you have any sense of how much Qatar has spent so far and, and, and will that investment pay off? Well, I don't know how much of a $220 billion investment, how much returns you could see on that. They're spending upwards of 60 times what any other nation has spent trying to host the, the, a World Cup in previous years. They're building all of these stadiums from scratch. These are world-class stadiums, and they're hoping to continue housing uh, and hosting events moving forward. That's really where the return on investment that so many nations that host whether it be Olympics or World Cups come into play where they can't monetize these these venues afterwards. So that's really where it's going to come in. And from a PR perspective, just putting the nation on, on a world stage in a very diplomatic and very cultural and sporting venue. Yeah, you said they, they can't really monetize that afterwards. A lot of times these hosts will then turn these stadiums into something else that's useful for their country. So given all this investment, what do you do with these we're seeing these stadiums now on our screens. What do you do with these facilities? Well, that's, that's really anyone's guess. Really the challenge that they're going to also face, whereas, say, looking four years past Qatar to when the U.S. hosts the, the World Cup, they're going to uh, have it in stadiums, soccer stadiums, football stadiums, that are going to be reused for those events. Soccer, football, they're spread out across the entire country. Almost all of these stadiums are within a train ride or two away. So you're going to have eight world-class stadiums, 50-plus thousand people within a few train rides or a short car ride away. I don't know how they're going to be able to fill those stadiums month after month, year after year. But frankly, they're putting so much money into this, they may not even be worried about that. They're investing $220 billion. This is something that they're not looking at. Oh, boy, can we have track and field in this venue in another six months or a year or a concert? I don't really think that they're thinking about it in that way. They are all in. This is their first opportunity to qualify for a World Cup. Any nation that hosts the World Cup automatically gets a bid. So that's what they're looking at, to build soccer within their nation. Look, anybody who's been to, to Doha or Dubai or Abu Dhabi knows that these places are willing to spend to get the attention, to impress, uh, and there's, there's no price too high based on what I've seen in being there. But mm -hmm. that's also come with some labor concerns that Qatar's been dealing with. It's been accused of uh, oversight and specifically the concerns of foreign laborers. How is that e mm -hmm. issue being dealt with? Well, it's being dealt with on a very top-line PR type of level. We, we heard before about how um, there are new, new minimum wage uh, you know, uh, rules that have been put into place. Let's put that into context. The minimum wage now for a monthly worker building these stadiums is still only 275 U.S. dollars. And that went up from what it was before. They talked about uh, making work schedules and allowing them to leave. These are all basic rights that you think about, you know, that they've made strides. They've made strides from basically, you know, interning and encamping these workers to now basically giving them a wage that could possibly be, be lived on and rules for when they, they might work. So this is going to be a stigma that no matter what happens, not the first line of what people are going to talk about when it comes to these World Cups, but it is going to be front and center because they did build these stadiums, seven of the eight of them, on the backs of these migrant workers. So that story is not going to go away.
the majority of them from South Asia and Southeast Asia, um, worth pointing out. I, I want to ask, how important are these games for non-G20 countries in getting an opportunity to really host such large sporting events? That's really that we talked before about what do you do with these stadiums? Well, if you're going to be a non-G20 country and, and host these games, what are, what's the end result? Uh, when it comes to the Olympics, when it comes to the World Cup, will it just be those nations that, that want to make a stamp on the world stage and be able to do this? But you see what Qatar has had to do to build these stadiums. Are you, as one of those nations, willing to invest $100 billion to host a World Cup or an Olympics? And as we just were speaking about before, not really seeing the return on investment in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the, of the stadiums. I think increasingly we are going to see some of those players try to get in and win bids for these events. Uh, you know, you look at the, who's hosting the, the summer games in terms of London and Los Angeles coming up. But beyond that, it really falls to some of those nations to make those bids. Same thing with the World Cup. Mike Bacco, DailyNational.com. Uh, Thanks for your insight. We'll have